Hello everyone. In this video, we we'll learn about Japanese residential architecture and Japanese architecture in general. So Japanese buildings always follow a grid, like you see here in this picture. And this grid follows a Japanese measuring unit, which is ken. The traditional material used is wood. It's left unpainted and used in its natural form in an appreciation of the grain. So these columns here are made of wood and the walls, some are wood and some of a different material that is paper attached to a thin wooden frame. This paper is called washi and this wall made of washi called shoji and a different type of wall called fuzuma and the difference between between these two walls is that fuzuma does not allow the transmission of light where shoji does interior walls in japanese architecture are designed in a way that they can slide and move allowing the opportunity to create more space for a particular occasion for more privacy. And that's why the walls are very lightweight, so they're easy to slide. So you can see it as a one large room with the roof and the exterior walls that can be flexibly subdivided as needed. Another feature in Japanese architecture is sliding doors. Doors are the same elements as walls, just slide the shoji and enter the other space. We see from the type of walls and doors used in this culture how much respect and exploitation there is of space and light. So we've covered some elements that define the volume of a space, such as walls, doors and materials. And now we'll see the, these interior spaces, how they are used. So when you enter a Japanese house, there's an entrance hall. This space is the same level as the exterior ground. And this is where shoes are placed before entering. The space is called Genkun. The Genkun space is defined from one side by the entrance and the other side by a step because the rest of the house has a higher level than the ground to protect it from the flooding. A Japanese reception room has a tokonoma. A tokonoma is a decoration space in which items for artistic appreciation are displayed, such as crowls and flowers. Tokonoma has a pillar on one side. It's made of wood. It's made especially for this purpose. The type of wood and the shape defines the level of formality for this tokonoma. It's placed, the tokonoma is placed opposite to the entrance of the room. And in Japanese culture, there's a rule that when having guests, the most important person sits with their back to the tokonoma out of respect. Last, last feature we'll talk about is tatami. It's a mat that has measures of 0 0.5 by 1 ken, traditionally made of rice straw. Contemporary tatami is made of wood chip boards or polystyrene foam core. Tatami mats are placed side by side to cover all the floor. And because of this, the measurements of interior spaces need to be calculated to fit a number of, to of tatami. Here is some different ways how to fit tatami mats in a room.
The material used in Japanese architecture shows how environmental friendly it is and how much they rely and appreciate nature by using the materials for construction and decoration as the flowers in the tokenoma. So we've got to the end of the video. I hope this has been helpful for you and thank you for watching.